Hello everyone, welcome to my Star Girl review. This is a free episode 12. We can learn a little bit more about Dr. Edo's plan with the Dolores actress, and it's like a 50s, 60s type of vibe. And I really enjoyed seeing a little bit more about her, about who she is, and it turns out that she was a really successful actress. And Dr. Edo basically wanted to mess around with her. Her mind literally, so that's why we got to see the introduction of her, and then we see that Olympus is, is in the gym and wants to, um, like she's like angry, and Sylvester shows up out of nowhere about the door opening, so it's sounding open for some reason, <laughs> and then I don't see when the back door was open, but anyways, he tells. All the that he wants to face John alone, and this is why he will kill John for her to avenge her parents. By now, the work is somewhere out there with the limiter um, being removed, messing his mind up, and he takes the hour glass off a bit and it does really mess up his mind. Not sure if he really put it back on or not. Sure I'm on that one. We have this entire thing with Cindy and Mike and Joaquin were there trying to figure out where the lab is where Cindy's dad has possibly a cure for Cindy and for some reason this is the one time where Joaquin used um, the Thunderbolt pen to grant a wish that actually worked. That was actually real simple and not really suspect with detail and for some reason, they were able to find the lab, and Cindy was able to find her father's body with a brain, and then the ultra humanite, which is actually Dragon King, was able to, to approach Cindy, and they just really the a hand of them, and they end up running. But she found her lab, but she didn't really, they didn't really talk about the cure that much, and I feel like that was really a bit let down. They should really found at least something, because that's what Cindy was trying to do, and she was really. Looking for her father, she was trying to look for her father's lab that has a job, but they didn't really go too much detail of that. And they are still decided about the arch human that yes, but they will need to feel like they should have done anywhere. It seems that she would have been closer to being cured with the steels on her body. But she sees Corny with the staff and she tells them that she doesn't they talked about each other and the and so this is plan that he wants to kill Isidro and do this for himself about the, JS, the rest of the JSA and he tells Connie that he, he's, he wants to stab and she won't let him have to stab and he, they have this conversation about the fact that but then Connie thought that Sylvester was her dad but really he didn't really do much and Pat was the one that was always there for her and I really love how she expresses her love for Pat and the thing is that it's really a touching moment for her and it means a lot that moment means a lot to Connie and then Sylvester says that he wants to do the mission and anyways and he grabs the staff probably because he has Sylvester's body has cosmic energy around him which makes him which made him and the staff bond really well and which is why he was able to take it from Connie so easily. Sylvester later on talk to Yolanda and Beth about the fact that Connie already knows the plan. There's no point for being in this team meeting and work is out there not doing much. And he tells Yolanda and Beth that he wants to fight Jordan alone. And the fact that he tells the girls, the, he tells the girls that Cameron's art teacher, Mr. Dyson, is missing, and the Cameron and the grandparents are out. Doing some doing a ritual of so it's basically he's able so he has the opportunity to fight um, join uh, alone and he tries to and then Pat is the one who pushes him and basically wants to fight alongside him and Pat gets mad and says no stay put and then eventually Pat joins him anyways and then Sylvester knocks him down because he. Um, wants to do this himself, and then uh, we see that I know that when Connie and Beth and Yolanda are in the, Connie's house, we see that 
for some reason they're trying to find their way to, to go out and find a work and we're just happens to be out in the door, so it's right outside the door, which is too short of the dental. I feel I understand that maybe they didn't have a lot of time to do for the, they didn't, I feel like it would been better if the girls actually went out looking for him, but then they were, I feel like the, this episode would have been stretched out, but in reality that can't really happen because it's a 45 minute episode, so I understand why they did that, but I just feel like it would have been, they, if they drove out something where Instead of the girls being in the house, they were dropping out already, finding Cameron. I meant to say Rick. My bad. And then they were eventually saw him and instantly and then teamed up and like be and in like talking about um, the other human night and Sylvester and Jordan and to come up with a plan to stop them. Stop um, Jordan and the other human night. And then um, Rick basically telling the girls have had so that they knew how to remove the limiter and Beth said that she done some research and then that the Sylvester back then was helping Gret Tyler with the limiter himself and he was able to help him get food at okay, he basically was wanted to it to feel off on purpose and Connie China feels suspicious, but she's asking questions herself, figuring out right away. And I feel like Tony's smarter than this. I feel like she should have just guess right away. She should have, she should have said, "Oh my gosh, he's he's bad," and all along and all these things. And then we see that Sylvester and Pat basically he, Sylvester's burying him and tells him the story about how he's finally that he's at the other humanoid gorilla dude, and he is. And Sylvester's body, and just they switch the braids, and then needs to drag a cane, and then he's able to the stuff that he told the other JSA members about staying away, and basically him telling Yolanda to make sure Sydney does Sydney stays out of the way, and all these things, and my team being out but on their own, he basically wants to attack Jordan and destroy Tony and the rest of the JSA, and the plot twist is really uniquely done and he is able to the fact that for the episode we thought that Sylvester was giving them great advice helping, helping the JSA out when really he was pushing them away and it's weird because we didn't us the audience felt like we felt for it too in a way we felt like oh to me I did because it's he was traversing and all these things and just the ending made sense the fact that he wanted to in a way be a victim basically he was like playing along with as if he was um, attacked by Jordan and an extra humanite, aka someone who possibly would have killed the gambler, which we now know that it's the, um, it was the ultra humanite driller dude who, aka Trajan Changer, probably killed the gambler, and it's insane that he was able to do so much. So, this person was really done well. I really love how things unfolded there. That stuff with Cindy was really, really done. I really enjoyed seeing Cindy and my team really um, drawing a step closer to, uh, to doing what Cindy wants to do. And then Cindy has this fight with the ultra humanite, aka Dragon King, and it did go really uh, control and they had to run out of the lab. So the next episode is a serious finale, unfortunately. but. Yeah, stay tuned for that. Um, hopefully, all of you enjoy my video. I don't forget to f listen on Anchor. Don't forget to find me on Twitter, Instagram. Links are down below. And don't forget to share this video if you find this interesting. I'll see all of you soon. Have a wonderful day. Bye.